Hackers Attack, Apex Legends, and it looks like League of Legends MMO is being rebooted. All that and more, my name's Ethos, and these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Coming at number 5, the 8v8 squad mode in Halo Infinite is getting some new yet familiar maps added to its rotation. The upcoming batch of brand new maps will be a walk down memory lane for a lot of longtime Halo fans. Predation is being added to Slayer, King of the Hill, and Land Grab game modes, and first appeared in Halo 4's Castle Map Pack. Refuge is a versatile map which will host Slayer, King of the Hill, and One Flag Capture the Flag. Timberland Evolve will make its third appearance in the shooter's franchise. In total, seven brand new maps have been introduced, each hosting multiple game modes within the 8v8 game structure, and all hearkening back to the times of the old in the Halo franchise. Moving into story number four, we have some interesting changes coming to Overwatch 2 that are going to actually benefit players. It looks like this week there was a brand new developer update video where Blizzard announced changes to both hero releases as well as how mythic skins are unlocked in the shooter. This video also covered things like brand new maps and map reworks, but that stuff is still in the works. As for the good news, no longer will players have to wait until they can unlock a new hero through the battle pass. Instead, all heroes will be available to players for free as soon as they launch. That includes the most recently teased hero, Venture, as well as all previously released heroes. This starts at the launch of Season 10. The team also announced there will be a new way to unlock mythic skins in the game. Yes, you still have to unlock those, but with the launch of Season 10, players will be able to access the mythic shop where they will be able to obtain mythic skins from seasons they might have missed. Details of how this shop will work will be available at a later date. And moving into story number three, for a while now, everyone's been wondering about the status of Riot Games' League of Legends MMORPG project. The whole thing has been pretty hush-hush, and Greg Grosscaller Street has left the project to pursue his own game. After that, we were left to speculate pretty much ever since. The good news is, is that it looks like the project is still alive. The bad news is it will likely be years, literally, before we get any more updates as the project is going dark and likely for several years. Riot Games' CPO Mark Merrill discussed the state of the project, and according to those tweets, there's been a a great deal of discussion internally about the direction of the game, and some time ago they decided on resetting things. The main factor for this decision was the fact that the original vision for the project was too much of the same. As he puts it, they didn't believe we'd want an MMO that we've been playing before with just a rune terra coat of paint. Rather, they want to make something that truly feels like a significant evolution of the genre. This change in direction isn't a new thing that's just started happening. They started working on it over the past year, and they already built the game's foundation. This was done over the oversight of Vijay Sakar, who will be the technical director going forward. In addition, Merrill announces in the thread that Fabrice Condominas, who worked on projects at Riot as well as Bioware and EA, will become the game's executive producer, filling Greg Street's former role. And coming into story number two, it looks like Steam Family Sharing and Steam Family View are being combined into a brand new feature called Steam Families, and with it comes brand new features that will help players manage their child's playtime. Gamers can add up to five family members and manage them through the Steam client, mobile device, and web browser. Once a Steam family is created, each member gains access to family sharing, parental controls, and child purchase requests. Family sharing allows members of your family to play games, but you can only play the same game at the same time if you have multiple copies of the said game. You can also play games in your library and have someone you are sharing playing a different game in your library at the same time. The parental controls really stood out as a great feature for parents with younger children, as you can manage their playtime through hourly and daily limits, restrict access to the Steam store, and grant access to only appropriate games. Children can make requests for additional playtime or feature access where you can grant permission or temporary access to certain things. Playtime reports will be available to parents in order to help them manage their child's playtime, and children can make purchase requests, which then can be either confirmed or denied, and if approved, paid by an adult without having to use a gift or a credit card on the child's account. Account. The Steam site will give you all the details on how to opt into the beta for Steam families. And moving to number one, your biggest story this week is not unusual to hear of attacks on big gaming events, generally in the form of DDoSs, but this might be the first time hackers have brought an esports event to a halt by giving competitors cheats in the middle of matches. And no, we're not talking about hackers giving players cheats they wanted. Instead, this was hackers forcing cheats onto pro players. On March the 17th, Apex Legends Esports announced via Twitter that they would be postponing the shooter's North American Finals due to the competitive integrity of the series being compromised. The account hasn't been expanded on yet, but did state that more information would be coming available soon. 
As competitors were streaming their matches, spectators were able to see in real time players realizing that their games were being hacked in real time and that they suddenly had wall hacks in their games and they weren't able to shoot because the anti-cheat suddenly discovered the aimbot on the system. As Polygon pointed out in the report, one player, Gin Burton, had his chat displayed on stream. The chat read, Apex Hacking Global Series by Destroyer 2009 and Random. I'm getting hacked, I'm getting hacked! But I know, I know, sure. Can you play the game? Bro, I, I'm getting hacked! I know, but can you play it? Can you play it? Yeah, but it, I'm, it's cheating! The fuck? I know, I know, sure. I know, I know, I know. And what? Like, what? No, but is what? it fucking up your game? Yes, I can see everyone! Like, I'm... You need to leave, you need to leave, you need to leave. I, I need to leave the game, right? Yeah, yeah I'm game. leaving, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Bro, like, what bro, the fuck? Admin's now. Nick, admin's now. Nick, admin's but, now. Tell the admin's now. I left, now. I left. Like... Admin's now. <laughs> Restart your game and rejoin. Oh no, you left the match. Did you close your game leave the match? According to the anti-cheat department on Twitter, the whole thing was facilitated by an RCE, remote code execution, exploit. The tweet also notes that it's unclear whether this exploit was tied to EA's system or the anti-cheat. For now, they advise avoiding both as a fact that the hackers can apply cheats on players' machines remotely also means that they can implement other things as well, such as ransomware. The providers of the anti-cheat software, Easy Anti-Cheat, tweeted for the first time since May of 2019 in response to the RCE issues, saying that they have investigated recent supports and they are confident that there is no RCE vulnerability within EAC that's being exploited. They also add that they will work with their partners for any additional support needed. And that moves us to the question of the week. With news of Riot's League of Legends MMORPG being rebooted, let me know in the comment section below what do you think they have to do in order for the genre to really feel innovative and new for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And these are your top five stories for this week's Free to Play Weekly. Don't forget to check out MMOBomb.com for giveaways and the latest news. My name's Ethos, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, everyone.